welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun crafts for you today. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. In today's video, we'll be doing some high-end, you love those words, farmhouse rustic craft dupes. So let's get started with project number one. For this project, we are going to be duping this pillow coming in at $30.99 from Walmart. I'm going to be using this new fabric I found at Dollar Tree. Now these are 12 by 24 inches. So for each side of your pillow, you actually need two of one color and one coordinating color. Well, I don't have four of each color, so I'm going to double side it. So, and I do have a little piece of this kind of white left. So on one side, I'm going to do two rolls of pink with the white. And then on the other side, I'll do two rolls of the white with this light brown that I have. So I will have a free pattern for you. This is going to be a fairly large size flower, somewhere around the 20 inch mark. You will have a free printable. All my printables and patterns will be in my description box, link to my blog where to find them. This particular pattern comes in three pieces with arrows where to attach together. So you're going to print this out twice and you're going to attach the right and left side at those up and down vertical arrows and then you'll attach the top at those horizontal arrows and your second one that you've done this to you're going to take it and flip it over and then you're going to tape it together at that long dash line in the center to form your pattern now remember these are 12 by 24 pieces so we need 24 inch pieces so we need to take two and make one large piece if you're not using this fabric and you're using different fabric you just need about three quarters of a yard for your pillow all right if you want to make it double-sided like mine of course you're going to need three quarters of a yard times two <laughs> okay so from here on out i'm talking as if we have to glue or sew our pieces together so right sides together at the longest length of your fabric not the short side the long side right sides together and if you're a gluer you're just going to glue between the two fabrics at that very edge of that long side right? And then if you're a sewer, you're going to sew that long side on both pieces of your fabric. And yes, you're seeing a new sewing machine here because long story short, it was my birthday a few weeks ago and I wanted cash because I wanted to purchase a sewing slash quilting machine. Not that I'm doing a lot of quilting, but I'm using those thicker quilts and stuff to make a lot of our stuff nowadays, right? So I wanted a machine that can handle that. I did my research, YouTube videos, that kind of thing. And Oddly enough, around $200, Walmart was this brother machine. So happy birthday to me. I love it. Okay, so once both of these are sewn, what you're going to do on that seam, and I know you see that seam now, but you're not going to see it later, I promise. What we're going to do is take the pattern that you made and fold it back in half so you have that long area where you tape the two together and lay that folded part of your pattern on your seam of your fabric on both pieces okay and then of course pin it to your fabric and you're going to cut that out all right and then once both pieces are cut let's assemble them together right sides together matching up your sewn seams and also off camera i went ahead and cut out two 10 inch diameter circles they will once we get them the way we want them to be they'll shrink down at least in half okay so we'll come back to that in a minute so let's put right sides together our two flower pieces matching seams if you have seams if you don't have seams just match them together if you're a gluer you're going to glue between the two fabrics right along the edge of those all the way around but you're going to leave one area open for turning and stuffing okay if you're a sewer you're going to do the same thing both pieces together, you're going to sew all the way around. I did about a half inch seam allowance. Yes, love, love, love this new machine. It's so easy to work with and it's so quiet. My husband like literally naps while I'm sitting here sewing in the living room, you know, as <laughs> he's falling asleep through whatever show we're watching on television. But he just wakes, it doesn't wake him up like the other one was so loud. And it just feeds my fabrics through nicely, no matter how thick they are. My other machine didn't do that. Everything is just awesome, having fun with it. Once everything is sewn, go ahead and flip your flower to right side out. Go ahead and move your hand along all those seams to make sure that you get all those seams out. It's going to look kind of funny for a while, but we will fix everything, I promise. And then once that's done, you're going to go ahead and stuff everything as tight as you want it. But try not to stuff the center very tight because we want a little bit of give to put our flower center in there. And of course, you're seeing Bella at the bottom of your screen. You'll see her again later. Now, once you've got everything stuffed for your opening here, make sure either gluing or sewing, turn your raw edges in toward the stuffing and glue it closed or 
hand sew it closed. I will hand sew it off camera. All right, now let's go back to our 10 inch diameter circles. I will have a link to a video in my blog. All right, to slow this down for if you need it, because I'm going to go kind of fast. I'm taking some thread here and I'm knotting both pieces of threads together. And I'm going to come in and do a little gathering stitch here. I'm going to do it on the wrong side of my fabric. I'm going to poke it through about a half inch. My needle sticking out here. And then I'm going to come back from the back to the front and then from the front to the back. Boom, back and forth like this, doing a little pleating stitch. I'm about a half inch down from the edge. All right, again, go to my blog. There'll be a video there of basic sewing stitches if you need to slow it down. And I'm going to do this all the way around till I come back to where I started with my knot. Right, there's my knot. I'm going to pull it out a little bit, and you can see my needle there. And then I'm going to pull both of these out nice and long here, and I'm going to turn my little ball here so the right sides are out. And then we're going to stuff that center, okay? And then once you get it as full as you want it, pull both of your threads there. I'm going to just, you know, uh, cut off my needle here, and then I'm going to tie all this in a knot and close that center up. It doesn't matter how tight that center is or anything. I will just close it up as good as I can because, you know, you're not going to see that part. But close it up where your cotton doesn't fall out, right? I'll do the other one off camera. Same process. All right. Now, here's the pillow. I know it still looks funny right now, but don't worry. So... What we're going to do is hide our seams and make our flower look more like a flower. I'm using crochet thread here. You can buy it at Walmart. It's a couple dollars. And these doll needles, because they have a large opening. Or you can use like these upholstery needles, same thing. They're a little longer. And then pull out a lot of string here. Just like keep going a couple, two, three yards here. And then, you know, thread it on your needle. And I'm going to only take one end of my thread this time, not both ends together. One end and knot it. All right, I'm going to start in the center on that seam. All right, let's hide our seam and make this look like a flower. And I'm going to push that needle all the way through to the back side of my flower. I'm going to come out on that seam on the back side and I'm going to pull it all the way through till I feel the knot on this side, okay? Let's feel the knot against the end of that fabric. And I'm going to pull it a little bit tight and then I'm going to come across on that seam first around the other side of the pillow and then I'm going to take my needle and right near where the knot is. Don't go through the same hole because we don't want one gigantic hole where it's not going to hold. And then push your needle through to the other side and pull it all the way through. We're flipping our pillow back and forth and we're going to kind of get this little gathering stitch as you pull that string a little bit tight. All right, and then we're going to pull it tight again, coming on the other side of that seam, right? Pulling it around to the other side of the pillow. Put your needle through that side to the white side. Pull it through nice and tight. Right, just like that. And then you're going to continue this process in between all your petals. We're making sections in our flower. All right, so we're like going from like the, here, the white side. We're bringing it between two petals, flipping our flower over to the pink side, putting our needle through the center, pulling it through nice and tight, and we're repeating that process. So hopefully that's understandable. And you're going to repeat that process until you've got all your petals have string through it. Here we're going on the last side here. Pulling it nice and tight. And then once you get that, then make a little stitch on the back side. Go through your fabric. Make a little stitch in the center to make a little knot. I like to pull it through the, a little loop two or three times. Cut off the excess. And then this is what we've got, what it looks like. And we're going to put our flower center on. Now, you may not want this double-sided. All right, so if you want to put your poof on one side and then just finish off the back side so you don't see where you went through the center, cut a circle of fabric about four and a half inches in diameter and we'll cover that, but it's going to kind of fall in that hole a little bit. So I would suggest putting a little bit of batting there, making sure you kind of cover that center real nice and you can glue that on the back side and then have your poof on one side, right? Now, you can glue this whole thing down and leave it at that, but I'm going to glue it and add a little extra hand sewing along the edge as well. So go ahead, come on in. I'm going to add a little bit of batting on both the edges just to kind of fill in that space so it's a little more level for gluing our little center poof on, right? So right side and or white side and pink side, little batting in there. And then I'll go ahead and glue down our little poofs. I really love how this pillow turned out. I'm glad I didn't have enough fabric so I can make it double-sided because it makes it fun and totally different than the original we're duping, right? All right, both of these are glued down. You could leave it at that, but I want to just make sure it was a little more secure at the edge. So I'm just coming in with needle and thread. Again, just it's preference if you want to do this, making sure I kind of hide everything, but just sewing right along that edge there to, you know, 
make sure it's nice and secure. If you bring your glue to the edge, you know, just make sure that none kind of seeps out around the edges. That's, you know, just the way I like it, preference. So that's why if I glue in toward the center a little more and hand sew around the edge on both sides, it's the assuredness that I'm not going to see any glue around the edge. So here's what it looks like done both sides, ready to go. Now let's have a little more fun with it. So I've got a piece of fabric here and a couple pieces of just batting in the center. You can make this as long as you want. I think I've got about a three by five. I'm going to use some of this macrame thread from Dollar Tree, a little button here. All right, I'm going to bring in some beads later, but I am going to use this uh, quote that I printed onto some fabric. I will have a link, of course, blog link to this free printable, and there'll be a video there how to print onto fabric using your you know, printer from your computer. Okay, so that's what I did, printed onto some fabric, and then I'm just sewing it off camera here. I sewed it all the way around onto my batting and other fabric there, and I've got a little you know ink here on a dauber. I'm just going to ink around the edges to give a little halo around that so it allows the words to kind of pop out a little bit more. And then I've got my button here. I've just got some twine through the holes and I'm just going to kind of knot it off on the back side here. I don't like empty holes on my buttons. Cut off the excess and here's some beads. They're just beads from Walmart and I'm going to add it on to the end of my macrame twine. I've taped around the edges to get it through the beads a little bit more. Here comes Bella to check out the string that mommy has. And so as I'm trying to take the tape off the ends, she's trying to pull on my macrame twine, of course. She wants to play. It's fun. And there's little balls on it, so we have to bat those. <laughs> it's so funny. As I'd get it away from her, she'd pull it back. So we'll have a little play moment here in a minute. As I always say, this is a professional video. It's just a day in the life of a cat mom. <laughs> Tying it knots at the end of my beads. I'm going to smush the ends and then cut off the excess. And then we're going to watch Bella play a little bit. I'll swing it and give her some fun. She is just so cute and fun, of course. I can't believe, like, she's seven months old already. I swear we just got her, like, three months ago. But she just fits right in, and she we just ha are having a ball with her. And, of course, just she's stolen our heart, and we just love her. So if I can get this away from her, we will finish our project here a little bit. But she will try to grab it at least one more time right here. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and glue our tag on. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue here right at the edge. We're going to put it right at the end of our poof and I'll put a little bit more glue in the middle here. And then we'll go ahead and glue down our little macrame bow, wipe up the excess glue here, but no worries, we'll cover that with our button. Once we get our button on, it will make this project complete. We'll take a look at the final results at the end of the video. But first, let's take a look at the comparison. So the original came in from Walmart at $30.99. Ours comes in at $7.50, which I still think is pretty inexpensive. Out-of-pocket savings of $23.49. What do you think? Which one do you like better? With that said, let's move on to project number two. For this dupe, we're using this wooden ladybug from the foxdecor.com coming in at $30.60. Here's your supply list. <laughs> we'll add a couple more things later. I thought it was kind of funny. I had to throw that at you. I'm going to use this long board. I'm going to actually cut this at 12 inches. I can get two pieces out of it at 12 inches. It's a little bit longer than the original ladybug. I think it's nine inches. I want to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to use my Viver mini table saw here. I love this. It's so lightweight. Awesome. I'll have a link down below if you're interested in it. I'm going to cut it, as I said, into two inch two 12 inch pieces and then I'm just using some wood glue here to attach the two pieces together and I know it's funny here I'm laying it on top of this very vintage step stool but it's so I can once I add glue I can clamp both of them together and I'll let that sit for a good half an hour all right once that's done I have a ladybug pattern here I'm going to use you know I'm gonna say it yes I will have a pattern for you Link to my blog for this ladybug. You just basically cut it out and tape the two together at the dash lines. Now, this is made for 12-inch tall ladybug. All right, so I cut my pattern out, right? And I'm now going to just use, you know, a Sharpie marker and trace it onto my piece of wood. And then once that's done, we'll go back outside and I'm going to use my jigsaw to cut this out. We've got one nice, beautiful, sunny day outside, a little bit of break from the rain, and we'll get this cut out nice and easy because it's just long, sweeping, flowing lines to use the jigsaw with. 
And I just love using it on like the salvage wood because all the little lumps and bumps of it makes it really fun. Now, once I get this cut out, it gives our piece a lot of personality, I should say. Of course, I'm going to go in and sand everything up. I really like to kind of sand my edges so they're rounded. Everything isn't just so sharp. You know what I'm saying? Like not so much the cut edge, but you know, that kind of beveled edge from the front going over to the side. I really like to round those out. That's just preference, but I don't know why I felt like you needed to hear that. So there it is. Once everything is all sanded, we'll bring it inside. I'm going to use some of these wood circles. You can get packages of these at Hobby Lobby or uh, Joann's. I think I think Walmarts are too big, however you want. But if you don't want that, you could use just one of these large size foam brushes. I'm also going to use this little tag here cut with the laser machine. These were perfectly wonderful. The wood planks from Dollar Tree because it's the same width. But my tag is about four and a half inches long. And then, of course, the width is about two and three quarters. So the paints we're going to use, I'm going to use Debbie's Design Diary Little Black Dress Chalk Paint. Dixie Belle Chalk Paint in the color Rustic Red. And we're going to come in here with, you know, my Waverly Antique Wax mixed with water and some Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color Drop Cloth. I decided, oh, I'm going to go ahead and use that Waverly Antique Wax mixed with water on the tag so that when I paint over it with the Drop Cloth, that little bit of staining will come through because the wood is such a light color. So I'm doing that first. So set it aside, let it dry. And then I decided I just wanted to use these wood circles for the little you know, circles on the ladybug because I thought it would look cuter with a little bit 3D dimension. But if you don't have that, like I said earlier, you can just go ahead and use one of those large size sponge brushes and you can sponge the black paint on, you know, after you've painted the red of your ladybug and all that. So I'm mean, coming across the top, the, our little circles are painted. Some of them I cut in half and kind of three quarters. So they're kind of, you know, at the edge of our ladybug here. I marked the head area, of course, and then I'm going to come in with that little black dress chalk paint, paint the front, the sides, and then the whole back, I'm going to just paint black. And then, of course, I've got our rustic red chalk paint painting the bottom edge here. I'll distress everything off camera with the electric sander. Right, a little bit of painting done. And then my Waverly wax is dry, so now I'm coming in with the drop cloth on the tag. I paint front and back because it's going to kind of hang off the ladybug a little bit. And of course, yes, we're lindifying it. Just a bow and a little bit of greenery isn't enough for me on this. And then I have two hearts here because at first I wasn't sure what size uh, I wanted to use, but I'm going to use this smaller size heart here. Again, I just cut this with my X-Tool M1 laser machine. And on the heart and the dots, I'm using some scrapbook paper. That's choice. You could totally just leave it painted. I'll do the red dot on the heart. I just trace the heart and then cut it a little bit shorter all the way around. And then on the circles, I'm actually going to use this circle punch. It's the exact same size, but I'll kind of lay them on the wood circles a little bit off so it looks a little bit short and then I'm just coming around this again is preference you guys know I love the look of sewing on my papers and stuff like that and I'm just sewing around my wood circle or my wood circles my paper circles and my hearts this is what the paper circle looks like I'll do the rest off camera all right here everything is all distressed up on the front and then here's the back side just all in black but distressed so I want the back finished off right and then I'm going to come in with my little mini sander thing here and distress all my wood circles and my heart want those a little bit distressed around the edges just so it fits in with the ladybug not a lot of the distressing will be seen but at least i know i did it so it, like i said fits in with the ladybug and then i'm taking the open end of my scissor blades and i'm just scraping along the edges of the paper gives it a little bit of a rustic look as well so if you don't sew that's a great way to add some personality to your papers and then we'll just start gluing everything together Get the paper on the heart. And then, of course, we're going to add the, pur the purple. The paper. <laughs> How you guys listen to me? I, I swear, all my life, I've jumbled my words. Add the paper on the circles. And as you can see here, I'm laying them off just a little bit so that you can see the words there. See the word. See, now I can't even think. Well, yeah, you can see the words of the paper. So you can see the wood on the paper. Oh, my gosh, that's funny. All right, bear with me. We're just going to keep going. I've done this in like three takes. <laughs> Adding all the papers to the wood, laying them off kilter a little bit so you see a little bit of wood around the edges, and then we're going to start gluing our pieces down in the pattern I want. I'm making sure these kind of top ones, I lay them down so when the tag's on top, I see a little bit of the circle there, if that makes sense. 
And I don't want him like, I kept moving that one back and forth. I don't want him like in a straight line. So, you know, I'm just kind of making sure I just lay everything a little off kilter. We want it to look a little rustic, right? And I like that I did kind of half circles here so they can go right up against the edge on our ladybugs as well. Or ladybug, it's one. We only have one here. Again, a free printable for you. You know what I'm going to say. Link in the description box to my blog. I just did this one in vinyl. I'll have the font for you as well for those of you with electronic cutting machines. You want to, you know, make it yourself and cut it out in vinyl. Or those of you that want to, you know, use the PDF printable and print it out onto some paper or something first and glue that to your tag. Either way is perfectly wonderful. Once we get this part complete, I'm going to use some rusty wire here. Now, I have a link to my video. It's a few years old if you want to rust your own wire or a link to the Etsy shop. I buy it if I don't feel like sitting there rusting my own. And I'm going to use my crocodile and punch a hole in my tag. And then I'll add the wire in and I'm going to bring it right back around the side of the tag and back through the hole again so it adds nice stability as we loop it around the tag and then the little short piece hanging out there I'm going to wrap that around a paintbrush handle you can see how it looks on the back side there and then I'll once I got my little loop-de-loops here I will smush it down to the tag just to kind of give us that nice kind of farmhouse rustic perfect it looks wonderful and then I'm going to punch a hole in my heart and before I add this onto the wire, I'm going to take the wire there, wrap it around the paintbrush handle again, make some loops, kind of smush it down a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit, and then I'll add my heart. And then I will go ahead on the back side and make sure I've got that smushed right against and stable up next to one of those loops. So I'll squish it down a little bit more, cut off the excess, again, wrap it around the paintbrush handle, make some loop-de-loops, and smush that top part down to the heart, and it is done little bit of movement, not much, but nice and stable and cute curly cues in the center. And then you know it was coming. I'm taking my black paint mist with water and a fan brush, wipe off the excess, and I tap my fan brush to add splatters to my ladybug. And then I'll bring the tag in. We'll do the same thing here, adding it onto the heart and to the tag. Perfect. Gives us a little more personality. Then I'm just taking some thick twine here I get at Walmart. It's a really thick diameter twine just wrapped it around a couple times around the neck and gluing it into place with some great scissors it took me <laughs> you can see how I toss them to the side those scissors are like they don't cut anything and I just bought them singer brand but they're horrible anyway throw those to the side and letting the glue set on the twine around the neck I'm cutting a three pieces of cardboard here because I want to take up the space between the bottom of the ladybug and those circles so that my tag lays nice and level. I'm going to add some Excelsior here. Just a little bit. It's kind of like the moss situation I explained in the last video. I see people add like a lot of like Excelsior and it looks great. And I do it. It looks stupid. So just a little bit here along the top and the edge. Then I'm going to glue my chipboard pieces together. I call it chipboard. It's scrapbooking. Cardboard if you're not a scrapbooker. And glue that down to the ladybug. And then that's where we're going to add a little bit more glue to put our wooden tag onto. Now I've got that same thick diameter twine from Walmart. Tied it into a bow. I've added some beads here. And of course tie a knot on each end of the bead on each tail of that bow. Cut off the excess and smoosh it. And then we're going to go ahead and glue that down. And then, of course, add a button with some twine through the center. That makes this project complete. Let's take a look at the comparison. So ours came in at $2 because that wood was free. Fox Decor at $30.60 with a savings of $28.60. What do you think? Which one do you like best? So I hope you like both of these dupes today. I know I had to do it again. It's fun. You're going to see a few more dupes coming up because I just think they are fun to recreate. See if we can get the price for less. Put a little twist on it. Lindify it or whatever your name is. You can quote unquote insert name here. Afy it <laughs> and make it fun. And it's just it's just fun and different to do. Anyway, enough of that said. If you walked in here for the first time, you're just checking things out, you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. 
please leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on these two projects. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help my channel to grow. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. You are who God says you are. You are the person he has chosen. You are the person he needs. You may be feeling that God is asking you to do something in your life. And when God calls you into action, don't turn away with thoughts of fear. Don't allow the enemy to showcase feelings of inadequacy. Don't believe in his lies of not being good enough or strong enough to handle whatever's in your path. You must believe in what God thinks of you. He values who you are. He has confidence in you. He has instilled in you visions of hope and a future full of dreams. You have been given skills and talents you may not even realize you have. God has given them to you for a reason. You must believe that wherever he is leading you, your time is now. Don't allow the enemy to influence your thoughts. Don't allow insecurity or fear to lead you away from what God has in store for you. God is bigger than the enemy. The Bible says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Be brave because God is bigger than anything the enemy can put in front of you. God is bigger. He is bolder. And he is more powerful than anything that would try to bring you down. And God always wins. No matter where you are in life or what you're doing with your life, God may be calling you to do something for him. It could be a small but mighty and impactful move, or it may be something more bold and powerful, something that can change your life and move mountains. You may be thinking you aren't important enough to do anything for him, but you are an expression of God's heart, and with all authority, he is calling you to act and step forward. He will lead you where you need to go, and he will show you what you need to do. You will not be alone in any of this. God picked you. He has faith in you. He sees something in you, a special quality above all others. You see, you have something that no one else can offer. Otherwise, he wouldn't have asked you, and the enemy can't touch that. God trusts you. Imagine that. What an honor and a privilege that God trusts you and has chosen you to lead the way for him. So no matter how big or small the job he has for you, listen to his voice. Hear what he is asking of you. Accept it with your heart and do it with humility, grace, strength, honesty, but most of all, do it for the one who created you. How can you say no to that? I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.